Hey folks, I'm back with round five of the 2021 Vegas Open. And uh, this was a, a pretty good game for me. I was paired against Fide Master Eugene Unite. And um, I played Eugene many times before, uh, so I know he's quite a dangerous player. And I really wasn't sure what to expect for this game. Uh, once again, there wasn't a ton of time uh, after the pairings came out to prepare. Uh, and I just come off of a pretty long game where I lost to Grandmaster Bellows. And so, um, yeah, I really wasn't sure what to expect for this game. I think Eugene typically plays uh, D4, um, but here he chose E4. And so I was already kind of uh, thinking about what to do. I ended up deciding to play the Sicilian. I felt like this is just maybe the most flexible choice, the one I'm probably most comfortable with, uh, not really knowing what to expect. And yeah, he ends up playing Knight C3. So I played E6. Um, I explained in... Uh, the round three video why I like e6. I feel like normally against uh, players who start with knight c3, this is a good way to meet all kinds of grand prix and close Sicilian setups. Um, I feel like e6 is the most flexible way, not committing to knight c6 because of um, possible ideas with bishop to b5. Not that those aren't playable, but just I'd rather avoid giving white um, these options. So my opponent played g3 and indicating that he wants to go for uh, close Sicilian, and so we get kind of a normal setup here with d3. Um, and here I play bishop to e7. So this is a move I, I've played before, and the point of this setup is actually just to not commit the d-pawn too early. Uh, I might want to push d6, I might want to play d5 in one move, and so I'm just kind of getting ready to castle and getting everything out and kind of waiting to see what white does. Um, because here white ends up playing f4, and it's kind of a big moment for white because white can either play f4 right now or it can play knight e2. But if white wants to play f4 and then put the knight on f3, then they kind of have to do it at this moment. Um, if white were to play knight e2, I think I would probably stay flexible here and play something like d6 and castle. I don't think I would want to play d5 in a position where white can take and bring this knight out to f4. Um, but in the game, once white plays f4 and commits the pawn to this square, now I do think d5 is a very reasonable move, and now I just play d5 immediately. Um, and here, white plays e5, which I feel like is actually a positional mistake, and this is something that I've um, done a few times before in my games against uh, Grand Prix and like similar Sicilian setups. Uh, I just go back knight to g8. <laughs> it looks really weird at first, but once you understand that the idea is to play h5 and bring the knight out to f5 where it just sits absolutely perfectly, um, it, you start to realize that actually black is just kind of going to be better in, in this position. So knight f3, h5, white played h3, knight h6, castles knight f5, and yeah, I think black is just getting kind of like a dream uh, French defense here where white setup doesn't really make a lot of sense and white hasn't really won the battle over the d4 square, so white doesn't even have a ton of space here. Um, black actually has very good control over the center, and I think black is doing absolutely fine. Uh, so I continued b6, and this is kind of the typical plan. Um, the idea is to play bishop b7, queen d7, castle queenside, bring a rook over to g8, and then just start playing like f6, g5, and just kind of opening up the king side, and yeah, really, really just trying to make things uh, very, very tricky for, for white's kink. Uh, and in the meantime, it's really hard for white to create counterplay. Um, so white played knight e2 here, which I think is a very natural move. The typical plan is to try to play like c3, d4. Um, I play bishop to b7, and now he just goes d4 immediately. And yeah, this struck me um, as a little bit odd because normally I know white is usually playing c3 first and then pushing d4. And I, I didn't quite see what's wrong with that at first, but then I noticed actually I can just play bishop a6 and there's too much pressure on the center because I'm pinning the knight to the rook and white will have to defend the d4 pawn and then I can take on e2 and then I just have way too many attackers on, on d4. So all of a sudden it seemed like um, white's center here is just kind of collapsing and I didn't really see what um, white can do after after bishop a6. And yeah, I think it's actually just already um, kind of busted for white. So c3, I was thinking white could also take on c5 but then white is just kind of totally seeding the center, and uh, I'm going to have h4 coming up soon with the idea if g4 I can take on e2 and uh, go knight to g3. 
And yeah, I think it's just huge, huge issues for white. Um, so c3 is played. Uh, I take on e2. Queen takes e2. And yeah, originally my intention was to just take multiple times on d4 here. And I, I do think black gets a great position, just like extra pawn. Really solid extra pawn in the center. Um, I thought, like, it's not going to be easy from here, but if black plays well, then black should be able to uh, to convert, like, no real compensation for white. Um, but then I was thinking, like, I also have this move, h4, <laughs> which to me looked maybe even, even stronger, because the idea is that after g takes h4, uh, which was played in the game, I now want to take on d4 again, and eventually I'm going to take the h4 pawn, and so I'm going to win an extra pawn, and I kind of got to mess up white structure uh, in the meantime. Um, because white can't really play g4 here, I thought, because knight g3, and I'm winning the exchange. I checked with the engine, and this is actually the best that white can do, uh, given that the center is collapsing. And white is actually not that much worse uh, in this position after takes, takes. And, um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I don't know. During the game, I thought it was just like, a clean exchange up, black should be winning, but Stockfish seems to think it's no more than uh, a small advantage for, for black, which was pretty surprising. So this is why my idea with h4 maybe wasn't um, totally best and I should have just taken immediately, but yeah, um, for whatever reason, both me and my opponent both thought, you know, like it's not really worth it for white to, to give up the exchange like that. Um, but in the game, white does experience uh, serious issues, uh, as we'll soon see. So g takes h4, I take on d4. And yeah, now Eugene really surprised me with his next move, h5, which was totally unexpected for me. I thought he was just going to recapture or maybe play like c4 and try to get some, some counterplay on the light squares. Um, but h5 totally escaped me. And the idea is that I can't really take the pawn right away because knight takes d4 and my rook is hanging and knight on c6 is hanging. But... Um, yeah, I decided to just take on c3, and after b takes c3, for the moment, material is still equal, but the h5 pawn is very weak, and I figured I'd be able to win it one day, and uh, I'll be kind of a healthy pawn up. Uh, in the meantime, though, I, I did want to be very careful here, because I felt like white well, could be getting some really quick counterplay with, like, c4 and rook d1. Um, so I play rook c8, and my idea here was kind of tactical. Um, number one, I just want to defend the knight so that there are no tempos against the knight. I was also thinking about a plan like knight a5, knight c4. Um, and I was trying to stop this move c4 because I was thinking if c4, I would have knight cd4. And then I can play rook take c4. Um, but then uh, Eugene ended up playing c4. And all of a sudden, I realized, wait, uh, you know, I thought knight cd4 was just winning. But then I realized, like, well, if I play this... He's going to take, take, and he has queen g4, which I totally overlooked at first. Uh, and then rook takes c4, he can go queen takes g7. And then that position started to look a little bit uh, unclear to me, because the rook is hanging, and um, well, I might have like queen g8 check coming up next. So I started thinking about other options here. I was thinking about maybe pushing d4, and this looked good for black, and I was also considering to take here um, with the idea that if queen takes c4, um, I might have some potential discoveries like knight d4 or something like this. And I thought, I was looking at this stuff and it, it looked uh, promising for black. But then I actually just, for whatever reason, wanted to kind of re-investigate this line with knight cd4. And I realized that actually things are not so simple for white. And I end up going for this um, because it's very forcing. And after queen g4, I'm able to take white c4 pawn. So the nice thing is that I kind of remove white's main source of counterplaying the position, which was kind of white playing on the light squares. And the only thing I had to overcome was what to do about this kind of uh, annoying queen on g7. Um, but I, I was really happy with this one because I kind of went back into this position. Like at first I kind of discarded it in my calculations, but then I realized, you know, maybe I should take a closer look at it. And I tried to make it work and I kept looking here. So I, I started calculating rook takes h5. And the main thing that bothered me previously was that white could play queen g8 check. And if I go bishop f8 here, then there's bishop a3. And this looked super, super messy. I didn't see a, a good um, solution to this one. Um, instead, I realized, though, that I could actually play king to d7. And um, if white plays queen takes f7, 
I have a very, very nice consolidating move, queen h8, where all of a sudden my queen and rook are lined up super actively against white's pawn on h3. Uh, my second rook is ready to join in the attack with either rook c3 or rook c2. Uh, my immediate threat actually is just to take on h2 with check, forcing bishop takes h3 and then rook c2 check, and white's king is just in huge danger. Um, king g1, for example, I'll be able to take on h3 with the queen, and white is just getting mated. And in the meantime, my king on d7 is actually completely safe. Like, white has no checks and very, very few ideas. So once I notice that actually the king on d7 is uh, safer than, than it, you know, first, uh, first looked, um, I realize actually this is just a completely winning position for black. Um, a couple of tactical details I had to see. Bishop a3, number one, this move definitely scared me the most. I have this move, rook h7. I think black has other moves as well, but this is by far uh, the best because it defends with tempo, and white's queen is forced to uh, actually leave the king side after rook to g7, and yeah, I think black just has uh, an overwhelming advantage and can take the bishop next. I can also just take it um, at this moment, or I can throw in rook g7 and then look for a counterplay with like rook c2. And yeah, I think white is just more or less lost. Um, so yeah, I was really happy to have spotted this idea. Uh, it reminded me of this one game I saw um, played by Wang Yue, the Chinese super GM. Um, I'll link it in, in the comments uh, or in the description down below. Because um, I, I remember seeing this game where he played king d7 in like a somewhat similar position where it seemed like white was attacking and then he gets his king out of the way and all of a sudden <laughs> black's counterattack is uh, super, super strong. And uh, yeah, I was actually kind of surprised when Eugene ended up playing queen g8 check here. I thought he would maybe try to avoid this and play a move like queen to g4. And I was thinking I would go rook h6 here, maybe rook g6 next. And um, yeah, I'm healthy pawn up. Of course, the position is messy because my king is in the center, but I felt like with good control over, over the center and, you know, my piece is all having kind of good squares here. I, I thought it should be um, pretty good for, for black overall. Um, after queen g8 check, though, king d7, I think things just kind of get untenable for white because now after queen h8, rook takes h3 is just such a huge threat. Rook c2 is also coming, and I think it's just pretty much lost. Um, white tried rook f2, just trying to um, defend the second rank and defending against the threat of Rook takes h3. Uh, if bishop takes d5, I was thinking I could just take here, and I think this just leads to pretty much immediate mate with the um, queen coming into h3. Um, and on any kind of move like f5, just trying to be super uh, aggressive, I think I could just play rook takes h3 here and rook c2 check. And uh, for example, king to g1. I think I can even just take this one, and after takes knight e6, White has no checks. The king is just completely open, and I think black should be should be give, giving mate here pr pretty soon. So, uh, yeah, rook f2 was tried, and I was thinking I could just take immediately and play rook c3. I didn't see a defense to this one. I thought this looked super strong. Um, I think black has many wins, but I just went with rook c3. It looked like the simplest move to me, just starting to take on h3 with check and uh, deliver a, a quick mate. One funny line I remember seeing during the game was that if bishop e3, um, I could play rook c2 here, among other things. And then after bishop takes d4, I have rook takes h3 check, king forced to go back to g1, and then black mates with rook h1 check, bishop takes h1, and queen h2. So I thought that was kind of a cool uh, geometric motif. Um, so yeah, rook f2, rook c3. Now it seemed like there was no defense to um, rook takes h3. And uh, yeah, white tried king to g1. I think I could already take on h3 here, but I, I thought rook h7 was kind of a nice regrouping, forcing white's queen out of the king side, rook g7. And uh, yeah, white's queen is actually just runs out of squares here and forced to go all the way back to b1. Uh, and then I just took on h3, and yeah, this was met with resignation as rook h1 is just uh, too powerful of a threat. Um, so yeah, I was pretty happy with this one. Always fun to win a nice uh, Sicilian game, and I thought I played uh, uh, pretty well overall. So now I'm on four out of five for the tournament. Uh, got two tough games coming up tomorrow, so I'm gonna go rest up for that. But um, thanks for tuning in. Thanks to everyone who's been following and supporting me in the tournament so far, 
And uh, yeah, hopefully I'll be able to finish up with uh, some good games in the future. Uh, all right, have a good one and I'll see you next time. Take care.